Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Here we are again with this beautiful goddess. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling vulnerable. Vulnerable. Today. Yeah. Okay, maybe you will. We'll do a video about that. <laughs> um, why it's so essential to activate your Shakti? As a woman, this is the topic that we were thinking about. Um, yeah, what comes to mind is that, you know, the traditional conditioning and education in society doesn't really encourage the flourishing of all this feminine beauty that is loved in women today. You know, you are asked to be really mm -hmm. practical, to be a mother, to work, to, to do all these things that are aimed at creating security for your family mm -hmm. and uh, that don't necessarily give you space to, to touch on the feminine essence, on this mystical aspect of what it means to be a woman. You know, when I think of Shakti, I think of the embodiment of the divine feminine. And uh, so the question is, um, yeah, what can be done about it? You know, we have teachings, we have women like you coming into the, into the field, uh, leading workshops and, and retreats and so on. So there are lots of teachers waking up around the world who are aimed at the same thing. You know, waking up feminine energy, creating sisterhood. Mm. Right? Yeah. Why is it so important? Well, the importance for me personally is around uh, tapping into the authenticity beyond the conditioned idea around what femininity is. Shakti is is the energy of feminine. So we have, I mean, this is just what we were talking about before, we have preconditioned ideas um, and values around what femininity looks like. And I feel that in order to tap into this Shakti energy, we need to see what the obstacles are that have been imposed on us of how we think we should be as a woman. Mm. Um, as you were mentioning, the mother, the nurturer, all these different qualities, and we kind of confine ourselves in a box of uh, this without looking outside. So for me, it's really important to see what the conditioning is that we have first in order to transcend that mm. as a woman. And then from there, there's so much that opens up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So when you feel when you talk about conditioning and uh, the images that we have about femininity, right? You are talking about being a mother. What else is in the field there that are the the conditionings that are not necessarily fulfilling for a woman? Well, it's not about not being fulfilling. There's just certain ideas that being a mother might be the most fulfilling thing that you can do in this lifetime. It might be your dharma in this lifetime. But a lot of women think that that's what you're supposed to do as a woman in this lifetime, where an empowered state could also be deciding not to be a mother and exploring different aspects of your life as a woman. But there's also conditioned ideas that being a woman is being sensual and sexy or being a woman is soft and nurturing or giving or receptive and surrendering and yeah there's a lot of cliches about this so it can be going across cultures cultures and religious conditioning and it's different all around the world mm. so again it's really just looking at what your ideas are more than anything else yeah and then from there i mean i feel like it even transcends the aspect of woman and just what is your truth and finding the courage to express your truth, whether that's being crazy and wild or soft and receptive or ugly and tired or sexy and seductive. Mm. So, you know, there's so many facets, but mm. being available for all of that to come through rather than just a linear mm. expression. So expanding the archetypes, right? There is a, there yeah. is a lot of diversity of emotions that women can access and uh, yeah, play with. So if, uh, you know, if a woman out there wants to wake up her Shakti. What's, I mean, where do you start? What's, it's a mysterious thing. The body. The body. <laughs> you start so in what, the body. You start in the body. You start yeah. what, dancing, you start playing with your body. Like, well, what does it look like? Well, I mean, seeing again the attachment to the mind, like we're very caught and stuck in the mind and thought processes and belief processes that once we can connect to the breath and drop in and breathe into the body, there's a whole nother field of experience that's actually going on. There's a whole nother world down here when we simply drop the awareness in here. Mm -hmm. And as women, um, we have a beautiful access to movement. We have this ability to, ability to open and move ourselves. So connecting to movement, dance, 
and sound release is a really, really beautiful way to connect to this Shakti energy and see all the dormant energies in there and especially sound. Mm. A lot of us have suppression in sound. Like when I started working with sound, I could barely even do a ah, this kind of sound, it was very shallow and very, very weak. And over the years, it's expanded so much more and it's growing even more. Mm. But women have a fear to actually even make any screaming sound or any loud sound because they think that they look stupid or they're embarrassed. And I mean, I worked with a woman the other day, it took her an hour to scream because she was just embarrassed and judging herself that this wasn't feminine mm. or relating it to the energy of anger rather than it just being a release of energy coming out. So these things working with breath, sound and movement can start to tap into the vital energy that's inside of us. That's beautiful. Wow. There's a lot more to say about that. But um, yeah, we'll record a few more videos on this topic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We love you. <laughs>